welcome to Rubrics, a St. Timothy's podcast. Uh, we have been MIA for uh, a few weeks. I I welcomed the birth of my first child, uh, James Blaze Klinkstead, and he and mom are home and healthy and happy. And that was wonderful getting to, to spend some time with him. A little bit different setup on our uh, screen and on your screen if you're watching on YouTube today. Father Steve is is working from home, and so we have fired Zoom back up, reminiscing about uh, COVID meetings for years and years. Except uh, this time we're uh, you know just doing it because it, it's uh, conducive in your home, and I'm at the office, so it's a little bit more fun than when we were forced to use it for a year. Yeah, quite. Yes. Yes. So, but today, so... go ahead. No, you go ahead. Yeah. I was going to say we're going to talk about changes today. Um, Father Steve has written an article that he'll talk a little bit about recently for Covenant and the Living Church. I obviously have had um, changes with my home life, and you have sent your daughter to college, and that's a different set of uh, changes. But we're going to talk a little bit about um, life's changes, how we deal with them as Christians, and kind of the stability of our faith and how all of those tie in together with the human condition. Any opening thoughts before I open us in prayer? Tons of thoughts, but go ahead and open us in prayer. And then we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll jump, jump right into, into it. it. Then. All right, let us pray. Grant, we beseech thee, merciful God, that thy church, being gathered together in unity by thy Holy Spirit, may manifest thy power among all peoples to the glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the same spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. Father Steve, why don't you talk a little bit about your uh, article for Covenant um, that went out this week, last week, very recently. Uh, today is we're recording on Wednesday. It went out yesterday, and I go. wrote it. I wrote it. My deadline was last Monday, and like most things, I wrote it up into the deadline, so it was fresh. So, yeah. I if 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 you're not aware of the Living Church magazine, it's a it's a very old independent. A news magazine, commentary magazine that is uh, associated. Well, it's it's a it's rooted in the Episcopal Church and broader Anglican Communion context. And there's some really really good things that come out. It's a weekly magazine. Those are not many of those left. Mm -hmm. Saint Timothy's is a financial supporter. We are an associate partner of the Living Church magazine, and it's a worthwhile uh, endeavor. And um, but one of the things that they have done, they branched off and. and I want to say it's been about a decade now, maybe longer, is there, there's a, a, a web blog. Um, there's a new article out Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday by a variety of very, very, very good and diverse contributors. And um, I'm, I'm fortunate to have been um, a contributor for about two years now. I do four articles a year, once a quarter. We all do. And um, they give us permission to write whatever we want to write on. And I've done articles on sort of mundane things like the theology of the Manipal to um, St. Stephen, to, to Soja, to, to, to bishops during COVID. And what was on my mind uh, for this deadline was well, I was going to write about something else. But then, you know, our, our eldest child turns 19 tomorrow was is. Uh, moved into college on the 27th last Sunday. And how did and, you take that? Well, let's, let's just say I'm glad we're <laughs> on Zoom because today's the first day I can talk about it without crying, uh, being completely honest. Uh, my daughter is, her. She, she's been rolling her eyes. And she just says, drama, dad, drama. Where's all this drama coming from? But I was writing about the, um, the impending change and... Um, it's interesting for me because when I wrote it, the change was real, but still um, anticipated. And there's some changes occurring in the in the lead up to it, but it was published after I the day after we moved her in, and um, and everything that I wrote, I still hope stand by and think is um, is reflective of 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 our faith and and my own thoughts on this. But I was. I was taken uh, by surprise by the intensity of the emotions that I went through and the intensity of the um, uh, the fear of change. And that really, it really, it really caught me off guard because I've always been one who is, who has said in church contexts, because we deal with people every day who are going through some change. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think John Henry Newman, 
thing John Henry Newman has said, he's building on other people as well, that just talks about how um, change, uh, the paraphrase, change is really the only proof of something is alive. I mean, that's that's the yeah. proof of existence is that, I mean, you, you, just life is nothing but one change after another. So yeah. to to deny change or to try to avoid change is to is to avoid living life. So we can't do that. The change is hard. And we deal with people all the time who are going through all kinds of changes, um, some more, um, um, you know, sometimes more traumatic and more unique than others. And we deal in the parish context with people who struggle with change um, all the time. And this one for me was, was, was surprising in its, in its intensity. And, and one of the things that I wrote in the article that I believed when I wrote it, but I didn't realize how, <laughs> how true it was, is that I think that the issue with change is not the substance of the change itself. It's not the actual details of the change. It's the uncertainty of where we will find ourselves on the other side. Mm -hmm. And to be more specific, do I have a place on the other side of that mm -hmm. change? Um, I see this, and, and this is not, a, I'm not speaking specifically at all to people at St. Timothy's in every church context. I have seen people um, of like generational conflict where people perhaps of an older generation are worried that changes are happening that is elevating the the um, the the role of a younger generation. Mm -hmm. And they're saying all these changes are happening. I don't like them. And I think what is the anxiety is, do I have a role in this new in this parish context yeah. as life goes on? I think and that's 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 the more appropriate question. Where, where what is my role? Um, our roles change, but we still have a role. Well, for me, it was, gosh, uh, what, what caught me off guard was 19 years of having a child under my roof and, and having that normalcy uh, and, and, and having that child completely in my life. Mm -hmm. And what caught me off guard was the radical, was the radical tear and no period of transition from having someone under yeah. my roof to having someone not under my roof. And then what I found to, to, again, to locate my anxiety was, is knowing that my child will always have a place in my life, but will I have a place in my child's life? Yeah. Because I, I can't control that any longer. Before, I could, because you're under my house, you know, we do this, we eat together, all that, and and, and I could, I could, I could um, oversee that. Well, now I can't. Now, either intellectually or, or, or in my heart, I know that I will, but, but, but that was a real, real, um, a, a real anxiety that I had. Uh, and then, so now uh, you know, we're four days into this. I'm, I'm getting better every day because I'm, I'm learning to calm down. I'm learning that um, I do have a role and, um, and I'm, I'm learning to embrace the changing nature mm -hmm. of that role. But, but I do have, I must say, I do have a renewed empathy for those who struggle with change because I understand it uh, in a in a real intense way. Now, um, I mean, we always go through changes. I've you know buried a parent or life changes or moves and all that. But for me, and and, and this is where I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. The change becomes even more intense when it's your own flesh and blood. I and mean, yeah. I've said. I've said that I, I mean, I, and this is, this is, this is not a hyperbolic statement. I cried far less and I was a mama's boy, still am a mama's boy. I, I took my mother's death and burial, which wasn't, which was somewhat of a surprise, far better than I've, than I've yeah. taken my daughter going to college. And it's, it's the dumbest thing in the world intellectually because she's, this is the best time in her life and she's yeah. living the time of her life and there's nothing but, um, just, just, it's just dripping with joy and enthusiasm and excitement. Mm -hmm. And it should be, but I, you know, I was surprised by, by, by the, the really, really odd grief, but, but it was, it was my own flesh and blood that come forward. So you've, you've obviously known change, you've been married, you've moved, you've gone to seminary, you've had ordained and the process and all that. And, you know, cause we all sat here and told you, yeah. you know, life's going to be different. It's going to change. And, and, and I'm ready. sure intellectually you're like, yeah, I mean, duh, of course it's going to change. And then your child in, in, in the most amazing act of obedience. And I hope he continues this comes on his That's actual right. due date 
on the feast uh, of the transfiguration. That's extraordinary. Um, and, and may 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 his number continue to, with that kind of obedience. But I mean, what was the moment, or describe the moment where you saw him, and you and there was an immediate change. Yeah, I have to imagine. Yeah, I was. I was. So as you were talking, I was reflecting, and and I also think that there's um a key difference between the change I've experienced and you, and that has to do with loss. Um, you are lamenting a loss in a sense, a, a loss of a child under your roof, a loss of a part of your routine. And my change has been an addition. Yeah. Um, but I, I actually think there's always a loss in addition. Um, I remember as a student in biology and chemistry, I remember, you know, my teacher basically saying what John Henry Newman said, just not in spiritual terms, change is proof that something is alive. You know, the chemicals are constantly changing. Things are being dropped off. Things are being added. New things are forming. Old things. Are, I mean, that's just how life progresses. Even things that seem stationary are constantly changing at the, you know, microscopic level. But I was I was thinking about my own change. Um what have I gained? I've gained a, a child. I've gained a responsibility. I've gained an immense blessing and joy. What have I lost? Um, and I and I heard people mention this to me, but I've lost uh, selfishness. Um, no longer is it what I want. Now all of a sudden it is all hands on deck for whatever this child needs and what, whatever he needs comes above anything I could ever desire. Um, and it's a joy right now. It will become, you know, much, much more difficult as he grows up and, you know, is hard headed like his dad was. Um, but I think even for you, there is there is a loss. And then what have you gained? I mean, I don't know off the top of my head what that would be for you, but I think there's always this push or pull. And I think part of the human condition is we lament the losses when they seem overinflated. Um, and when the gains seem overinflated, then it's a blessing. But they're both changes, and we we kind of deal with both of them in in very similar ways. But for me, um, yeah, I mean, it, it's an addition. It's a, it's a changing of my um, structures and levels of importance. You know, what priority is what comes first in my life now? What comes second? Um, my own desires, happily, all of a sudden get shoved to the back. Um, the second I saw, you know, his face for the first time, all of a sudden it is this immense pressure and responsibility, but also a joy that you know, my goodness, there he is. And it's now my responsibility. And I mean, it is a, a cosmic thing. I mean, it really is this sudden change that all of a sudden now my purpose in life is to make sure he is ready to, you know, carry it on basically. I mean, that's my future and I'm staring at him in, in the eyes right now. Not much else matters apart from you know, at a biological level, making sure he is safe and and protected and and ready to continue on living because that is you know part of me. Um, <clears throat> so that was that was a very cool a uh, change transition. But it, and it was immediate for you because you know oh, James yeah. spent a couple of days in the NICU. He's he's obviously fine now. But right. but even when, when I came down, there, I mean you you were clearly pivoting, guarding the door. Yeah, uh, and and you were the gatekeeper. You were the protector. Yeah, uh, and that was in, instinctive, intuitive, and 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 you you filled that space of he he needs this help, and and I I am I am making sure, and I'm his advocate, and I'm his protector, yeah. and 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 that wasn't a gradual transition. That was no. a switch that was flipped immediately. Correct. That does that doesn't that you never unflip. Yeah. Um, which is again sort of uh, uh, where where I am uh, on this on this end of it. Um, you know, and I I would love to hear your thoughts on this. I I I, I believe what I'm about to say, but I want to make sure I'm clear that um, I'm not. How do I say this? I mean, I think I think that to have a child is to. I don't want to. I don't want to exclude those who who do not have children, right. can't have children whatever whatever reason but i do think there is a a certain understanding of the nature and love of god when you have a child of your own that you can relate to in a in a in a, in a different kind of level i mean one of the thoughts that i had reflecting of again in sort of the weirdness of my own grief at, at this joyful time which is which is cognitive dissonance for me that, that i should be happy but but i'm i'm sad for myself but not for her um is that if I have this intense, passionate love, and it pales in comparison to God's love for me yeah. and God's love for my daughter, 
how, I mean, I can't fathom, I can't fathom that. Yeah. You know, I mean, I remember thinking, I, I'm, I am, I, it was, I'm, I'm, you know, I'll look back and laugh and be embarrassed at myself, but I was, you, you saw me Sunday. I was pretty, yeah, pretty silly, you know, and I haven't lost a child. Right. You know, I mean, I have, I have everything to be, I, I, I told, I told Sherilyn, it's like, I, I don't know. I, I can't fathom losing a child, like, like w- one who dies mm-hmm. and, and that kind of grief uh, because, uh, and I, and I, I can't, and, and, and I don't want to know what that's like. But the point is, when you saw James for the first time and that intense overflowing love, that your whole reason for existence now was to protect and 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 raise this child, pales in comparison to God's love yeah. for James. And it's just mind blowing. And you think, I mean, and again, it's one of those things that I know that's true because the Bible tells me so. But I can't, I can't, I can't fathom that. Yeah. But I trust I mean, in it. I think. I think the. Uh... Sunday I came back or whatever I wrote something in the in the front bulletin and I said um you know as as a new father the second I lay my eyes on my son I mean it is just innate you know the idea of sacrificing for him would I give my life for him in a heartbeat I mean that that is almost this biological innate you know of course mm-hmm. and that is again a fraction of what the father has for all of his children and what, and what yep. God, the father has done for, for all of us. And I remember sitting there looking at, looking at James and realizing like, I don't know anything about him. Um, I just know he's my, my son and I'm excited to get to know him, but the immense love that I had um, and, and idea of sacrifice and nothing else matters. And I want to make sure he is, he is okay. And then thinking about, you know, God has the capacity to do that for it every single person who has ever lived or will ever live. I mean, that is, again, a scale that we can't, we can't imagine. Um, Not only has and, the capacity, but Jesus Christ has died yeah, for all exactly. of these people. It's just, do we, do we choose to receive that love or not? Right. Um, that, that sacrifice is, is awe-inspiring. And I, I think you bring up a good point. I mean, we're both um, talking about our shared experience as, as fathers. Not everyone has had that. I also think it's always helpful when we when we talk about parenthood and stuff. We've all at least had an experience as, as a child. Correct. We've all been a child to to a mother and a father. And not to speak about, you know, home life and broken homes and things like that, but we, we can grasp at least part of the equation of a of a loving father and a child intellectually, maybe not, you know, map it onto our actual life experience, but we understand um, you know, fathers and sons and mothers and sons and mothers and daughters and, and things like that. But I think that's always a helpful reminder that this is a blessing. Um, this is not something anyone has ever experienced. Nobody's owed this. Um, I understood that, you know, going into trying to have kids and, and thinking about starting a family, you know, none of us are owed this. It is a, a blessing given to us by God. Yeah. I think the thing that I just want to continue to reflect on, and I think for the edification of our podcast hearers i mean we we do this podcast and we have to we have to reflect theologically based on life experience and you and i've had both pretty pretty you know milestone moments in the past month and 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 these are relatable moments people have children people send their kids off and all that so we hope that that we hope that as you're driving or listening or watching this you can nod your head and understanding or if you're you're going to experience this you know you have some insight as to what is coming but i think what is common to everyone is the idea that change is a part of life yeah and two th- and two things two things are certain one is the immutability of god the changelessness of god right um and we were talking before we went on the verse that pops into my mind immediately is uh Romans 13, I think it's, yeah, verse 8, is that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Mm -hmm. He is the same. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. And so in that, in in the constant change of life, that when we talk about God being the rock, that is the stability that does not crumble and does not shift. And that when we cling to Jesus Christ and his love and his mercy and his understanding— um, we 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 come closer to understanding what he meant when he said to his disciples, um, "Peace be with you, mm-hmm. and do not be afraid." Um, the other thing is so that's number one. The other thing is, in the midst of change, we do have a role on the other side. 
And I think that is, again, that's the, the thing that I'm learning the most in this is it's not to question, do I have a role? It's just to understand what is my role on the other side. So, uh, you know, me on this side is, is to, you know, my daughter will probably be under my roof a total of six months, you know, counting the summers from college. And then she'll likely move off somewhere, hopefully down the street. But But I have to be prepared that it could be California. I don't know. Um, it's not that I no longer have a role. It's just, I'm no longer tying her shoes. Right. I'm no longer cutting her meat. Uh, I'm no longer driving her to practice. But, um, and I think if we reflect, if we have good relationships with our, with our parents, we still value their guidance and their experience. And we, we still, we still value and desire the words of, of approval and encouragement Mm -hmm. uh, or just, or just, um, or just their presence because they've, They've known us longer than anybody else. And, and again, to, to, to go back to, to sort of to quote um, the words of the Lord through the prophet Jeremiah, before you were formed in the womb, I knew you. You, know, you knew and loved James before you ever saw him. Mm-hmm. And so you've known him the longest, you and Chloe. And so I think it's just, it's just a matter of, of, of embracing that new role and being excited about that new role because I can't change it. Yeah, I can't. I can't stop it, and it would be selfish and cruel to to try. And I think if if it, if that principle can be can be can, if we can make that a universal application, that whatever change we're going through is to trust we do have a role, and that we can't change progression of time, nor should we want to, even if there's pain involved. But to try to ask the Lord to help us find out what is my role. And what, and one of the things I've said in the article, and this is rooted from um, conversations with two parishioners who, who I think are both in their 80s, who came to me and they feel like they have a lot of life left. And they do. And something to offer and give. But they, they, they didn't know what. Because I think they view society, and I, and I don't think they're wrong. They view society as privileging youth as as the ones who can and should uh, contribute, and those who are older should just be cast aside. And that's wrong. Um, our modern society seems to be the only one that has not valued elders. Um, and elders, what what they can and should contribute is is that wisdom from experience of going through changes and then letting us know they aren't easy but you always have a role. And even if that role is to tell us that, that is an important role is to say, trust me, uh, you all, you have a purpose. um, And, um, and don't be afraid of that. There was that. um, And I also, I also referenced uh, this line in John's gospel of when um, St. Peter was restored by Jesus, Jesus Mm -hmm. um, after the resurrection and Jesus asked, Peter, three times, do you love me? Corresponding with the three times that Peter denied Jesus. Jesus tells Peter that when you were young, you could go where you wanted to go. But when you're older, someone's going to tie a rope around your waist and lead you. And John tells us that 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 was to indicate the kind of death Peter would die. But there is John Chrysostom in his commentary on this text talked about how that there is strength in age. And there is this element. We see this all the time. When we're young, we get in the car, we go, we're ambulatory, we we can do all these things. But when we get older, uh, our mobility decreases, our eyesight weakens. Uh, people may have to drive us. They may have to help us across the street. They may have to you know, be our caregivers. That is a reality of, of the progression of time. But that doesn't necessarily, doesn't mean there is, spiritual weakness there in fact there's great strength there Mm -hmm. and um i think i think in that weakness there's something to embrace there's still something to offer in the midst of that change you bring up a good point um talking about how jesus christ is the same yesterday today and forever and i think that is a as, as another reminder of the difference between creator and creature for us to to be alive is to change to have things force us to change to be changed by you know our emotions and and things constantly demanding things of us and god is is unchangeable um and there's a a real mystery there because we can't 
fathom what that might be like. Um, St. Augustine has a great, a great quote where he, he says, uh, the human heart is, is not constant, basically. He says, how many thoughts disturb it? How many ambitions? How many pleasures draw it this way and that way, tearing it apart? The human spirit itself, although endowed with reason, changes. It does not possess being. And then he ends it by saying, after so many sufferings, diseases, troubles, and pains, let us return humbly to that one being. Let us enter into that city whose inhabitants share in being itself. It's a wonderful reminder that, I mean, for us, our life is just constantly, you know, receiving all these things that demand our attention, that want to make us feel this way or that way. And we are, um, you know, pathetic in the sense that we literally respond. Um, we are not apathetic. We we have emotions and reactions to things. God is is apathetic. He has not changed. We can't, you know, say something to him and make him mad or or say something to him and make him more pleased with us than he already is. And there's a an immense blessing in there that when we look around and when we struggle with changes and we struggle with, you know, sadness and sickness and and we had joy yesterday and now we have pain today, we look to God because those things don't affect him. Um, he is unchangeable. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And there's and a blessing in there. Yeah. And let's talk about why he's unchangeable. It's not that he's stubborn or has a a super strength. I mean, he is strong, but he's right. strong because the changes that we endure are um, are brought upon because of outside forces. Yeah, that exert a um, power on us. Exactly. God's outside all of that. Yeah. God is not confined to the to creation because God is the creator. Mm -hmm. So God is immutable. God doesn't change because there's nothing that can exert power on him. There's nothing that can influence him. And uh, and that is, again, to go back to, to that to that trust in the strength and stability, that that rock from which we were hewn that we can trust is because he's not. Um, he's not confined to the things that we're confined to. Yeah. I've but Jesus trying. Christ, but Jesus Christ humbled himself to be confined. Right. And, and that's, for that's the time. whole, yeah. for, for a time to, to give us hope that he has endured everything. And he, he has all of those changes were, were, were thrust upon him and yeah. he defeated, he defeated its power of, of fear Right and um and 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 the power of of death that leads from our rebellion. Right and you know that's that's a good point. Death is probably the greatest change that we all fear. I mean that's that's it. That's I mean, also that's in the of, book of Hebrews. Right. Yeah. That, that's the one yeah. that change that that's the change that fears that scares us the yeah. most. And and yeah. Jesus, you know, has demonstrated we have no reason to fear it. I've been trying to pray. Um, and I say trying to pray Compline with James each night you know, when, when he gets fussy or whatever, to try to give him some routine. What um, a beautiful thing, because it begins with, Lord, grant us a peaceful night and a perfect end. Exactly. What exactly. better way to begin a prayer with a, with a newborn? Yeah. And, uh, um, you know, and I'll, I'll get halfway through and have to stand up and walk around. And, and so I'm, I'm trying to get to the point where I have it memorized so that I can set the book down and rock him and not there yet. But one of the, um, one of the colleagues at the, as it closes, um, has been, playing through my mind as we were talking about changes. Be present, O merciful God, and protect us through the hours of this night, so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of this life may rest in your eternal changelessness through Jesus Christ our Lord. That is our rest. Um, we will be changed. We will have things that change us, that demand us to be changed, that change our emotions, our rest is resting in the changelessness of Jesus Christ, the changelessness of God. Um, that is where we find our stability. And we were talking before we started recording that um, there's a good point to be made of how do we put this into practice? And one very visible institution is 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 his church. Um, the church is the rock. Um, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it, Jesus tells Peter. Um, there's this idea that the church, does it change? Yeah, we, we do renovations to our building. We do, you know, churches open and close, and, and ministers, you know, come and go, live and die, but there is a, a grounding to it all, a faith that has been rooted in Jesus Christ and in his life, death, and the resurrection that, that does not change. And we've talked numerous times about people who experience 
traumatic events and changes, where do they where do they flock to? We've seen it time and time again. They they all of a sudden show up at morning prayer because they know we have built a stability here to to mirror and to give us a glimpse of the stability of Jesus Christ. Um, and that is where we should be seeking our stability because it's a recognition that we don't have control. Things are going to change us. Um, we don't have control over that. What we do have control is where we where we default to, where we find our rest, and that is in the stability of Jesus Christ. Yeah, I mean, to go back to St. Augustine, another quote of his was, my soul is restless mm-hmm. until it rests in thee. Yeah. And um, it's St. Timothy's. We've talked about this for a long time. But again, as a someone who can has lived it um, with numerous life changes, the very next day, the day begins with, O Lord, open thou our lips. Yeah. And that just simply reminds us that that continuity and constancy of the daily prayers. I was, I was, I was emailing um, my daughter about the daily office and, you know, she, she wants to, and she, as she said in the podcast, when she was here, I'm not talking right. in the school that she wants to do, to do the daily office and do better and mm-hmm. all that. And I've, I've just been giving some, some suggestions, just, you know, being dad, you know, always. And I made the point to say, listen, it's not a test. The daily right. office isn't a test. It's a guide. It's a help for us. And it shouldn't be a burden. I mean, it requires discipline, but it shouldn't be a, a burden. And, and, and one of the guides that it does is it reminds us that when life does get um, chaotic, as it, as it does all the time, those prayers remind us of the unchangeable nature of God yeah. and the stability of prayer. So to say every morning, oh, Lord, open thou our lips is not a magical incantation. It's not yeah. sorcery. It's, it's the opposite of amnesia. It's remembering that God is constant and that whatever I've gone through in the evening, whatever I went through the day before, and whatever faces me today, God is still in heaven. Uh, the sun will still rise and set. I'm still loved. I still have a purpose. And at the end of the day, um, there by the grace of God I go and, and, and all shall be well. Mm-hmm. That sounds simplistic. And to a degree it is, but it's mm-hmm. it's a simplicity that is easily forgotten that that we try to overcomplicate. And for me, just doing that rhythm calms me is that I know I don't know what's going to happen in this day, but I know, God willing, how I will frame the day to enable me to 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 say those prayers. And 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 I tell people that the beauty of the daily office for me and the beauty of daily mass for me. Is that, and this is, I think I've said this on a podcast, I don't know, but I, 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 I imagine, I imagine prayer, daily prayer, like the coffee filter, like the old, like the real coffee, we all use Keurigs now and things like that, but like a real paper filter. Not all and of then, us. Not all of us. Uh, and then, and then the coffee grounds, you know, go in there. And then when the water goes through, it's filtered through that paper. And then that's something that gives strength, that, that gives us energy, that that wakes us up. Um, and I view those pr- all the things that I'm struggling with, that I'm angry about, um, that I'm anxious about, that I'm nervous about. Those are filtered through prayers and the Psalms, so that in my mind is wandering all during the office. Mm-hmm. That's why the office. That's why the they, to, again to to bring back the practical things. That's why morning and evening prayer, except for the Psalms and the readings, should be the same. And that's why we do the same structure, you know, day in and day out. So we don't have to think about it. Mm -hmm. And it's automatic and it's almost all muscle memory. And so that when my mind is wandering and angry and I'm thinking about this and I'm having conversations with myself, all the while it's being filtered through the wisdom of, of of those ancient words. So that by the end, uh, when the grace comes, I'm in a different spot. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's, that's my experience. That's what I, I certainly encourage people to do. I, I, yeah, I'm learning. It's, it's quite the same for me as well. Um, you know, those, those same words, um, it's the same, it's the same filter paper um, every day that you reach for and, and filter it all out. Any closing thoughts? Uh, what do you, uh, you're four days in, when do you expect you're going to, hit your stride and, and, and be okay. 
Well, the the more the more normal conversations I have that that remind me that the the change is real, but not as not as much of a rupture as my fear made it mm -hmm. out to be calms things. Uh, and then also there's this process also of, of, I mean, you, you remind yourself, but through prayer to stop being so selfish. Yep. Yes. You can grieve, but stop being so selfish. And I said that in my article, anticipating it, I'm making this all about me and I absolutely am. Um, and I mm -hmm. think it's fine to, to, again, to be aware of where you are and what you're feeling. Right. And to stay there for a moment, but you can't dwell there. You can't pitch no. your tent there. And so, um, you know, I was talking to um, um, Abby last night, and she, yeah, I think she's a bit sort of bewildered by this. And she's, you know, she says, I've been preparing for this. Have yeah. you not? I said, I've been preparing for you, but I didn't really think it'd be this hard on me. Yeah. Uh, and so, no, I mean, I mean, this is Wednesday. We dropped her off um, Sunday. I'm far, far better. Than where I was because we've texted, we've talked, um, and to see her joy and her enthusiasm is uh, is exciting. Um, yeah, and life goes on. So, yeah. suck it up, Buttercup, and uh, and um, praise the Lord. It's yeah. something my my mother might tell me. We're we're probably both learning a little bit about how selfish we uh, were, but didn't realize it, um, and still are. But yeah, but in it's, two it's, different it's, ways. It's a painful those, reminder. Yeah, yeah. Those changes have a tendency to purge away or bring up to the surface some of the uh, things that were complacent and, and hidden for a time. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, you've given us a, a glimpse into your living room. Um, but we are, <laughs> are thankful for Zoom allowing us to, to continue this podcast. And thank, thank you for those who reached out asking about it. Um, you know, we're not trying to go three weeks at a time missing it, but um, yeah. changes happen and, and sometimes, happen. You, you know, you adapt, do what you gotta yeah, do. You did, you adapt. So we, we are grateful that we were able to record it again this week. Let us close in prayer. Our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day, our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen.